This is a beast of an amp that not only delivers 200 watts in 8 ohms, but also has Blue OS streaming, MQA and direct on board plus numerous analog and digital inputs, thus AirPlay 2, Bluetooth HD and works as one endpoint. Oh, and it's also easy to control using a large touchscreen. The infrared remote or your tablet with Blue OS. The M33 has a distinctive design and uses numerous interesting techniques. But let's first see how you build your stereo around it. As said, you need to connect a set of loudspeakers to it and connect it to your router using either a network cable or Wi-Fi. If you have a computer with shared volume or a NAS, you will be able to play music from those shares. You can also hook up a hard disk containing music and play from there. The M33 is controlled using a touchscreen on the front, the supplied infrared remote or a computer, tablet or smartphone running the Blue Sound app. Your TV sound can be connected to the M33 using either an optical cable or if your TV has an HDMI audio return channel connection using an HDMI cable. If you own a turntable it can be connected too. You can hook up a CD player over analog or digital, the speed of output of a Blu-ray player or game console and so on. You can even buy an optional module so you can connect your TV box, DVD, Blu-ray or video camera to the M33 and send it from the M33 to the TV, so effectively making it a stereo AV receiver. I'll come back to that. The M33 has the appearance we know from the master line of products. The aluminium cabinet with black accents and black front panel looks unique. It measures 435 by 396 by 133 mm and weighs 9.7 kilos. The front only holds a large volume control, the Color TFT touchscreen and the 6.3 mm headphone socket. The display works like in the M10 that I reviewed earlier. The rear is a lot busier with on the right the power switch, the IEC main socket with integrated fuse and two sets of loudspeaker binding posts. These carry the same signal and are intended for B-wiring, not to switch between two sets of loudspeakers. Then we find a preamplifier output, one single ended analog line input normally called AUX, one phono input that accepts both moving magnet and moving coil signals and a set of balance line level inputs. Time for the digital inputs, starting with one AES EBU input, then two Toslink optical inputs and two SPDIF inputs. Full left we see two MDC expansion slots. NAD has this system for years now to keep your amplifier or receiver up to date or just expand the possibilities. Then we see two sockets for the supplied Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas, a mini USB for service purposes, the network socket with below it a USB-A connector to hook up a USB drive or the supplied measurement microphone for direct measurements. The HDMI ARC connector lets you play the TV sound over the M33. So there is no video signal, just sound. If you want to switch video with the M33, there is a MDC module for that. Just plug it in and you get three HDMI inputs and one output to be connected to the HDMI input on your TV. Back to the connections. There are two separate subwoofer outputs that direct room correction can adjust separately. A reset button will help you out if the M33 experiences a crooked bit. Then we see a switch to set the power amp in bridge mode. This will switch the two amps to one combined mono amp with double the power. You then need to add a second preferably identical mono amp which is not yet available from NAD. But my guess is that this is only a matter of time. Back to the connections. An RS232 connector is for connecting to fancy remote controls from brands like Crestron, Lutron, KNX and the like. 
that also controls your TV, beamer, lights and even the door camera. Think a few grand for the remote system only. If you want to keep it simpler, there is a remote infrared sensor input that lets you place the M33 out of sight and still control it. Two 12 volt trigger outputs can switch on ancillary equipment like the extra power amp you need when bridging. Inside it's very crowded. We see a rather comprehensive switch mode power supply, the two MDC slots, two audio boards with piggyback the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth radio board and the two power amp modules. These are the recently introduced Purify Eigentact amps developed by Bruno Potsais, known from his work for Hypex, Grim Audio, Mola Mola and Key, and Lars Lisbo that worked at Texas Instruments and worked on TAC. Their work came together in a company founded by yet another audio veteran, Peter Lingdorf. Potsais developed the self-oscillating Class D amp when working for Philips, but Philips couldn't find sufficient applications for it in the company's products. So it was licensed to the Dutch company Hypex that issued several versions of the Hypex UCD modules. I was never a big fan of those modules since I found they sound weird in the mid-range. Making use of newer components and improved technology, the successor, Encore, already sounded clearly better, especially when the standard design was tweaked somewhat or even a lot. This was what happened in, for instance, the Mola Mola power amps. Potsais came in contact with Lars Risbo that worked at Texas Instruments at that time but had worked on the TACT amp in the late 90s. They inspired each other resulting in what can now be seen as a further development of the N core design. But this design is not marketed by Hypex but by the aforementioned company Purify. Putzeis and Risbo gave a lecture for the Dutch section of the Audio Engineering Society at the Royal Conservatory of The Hague and although a reasonable part of Putzeis' presentation was at a too high level for me, the essence was that he fought for a way to further reduce distortion. That scared me a bit since I have seen in the 80s that reducing distortion to extremely low figures by increasing global feedback leads to a very dull sounding amp. But where you can design a class A or AB amp with no or only local feedback, the self oscillating amps pet size designed can't function without global feedback. Quality improvements have to be achieved by improving how the feedback loop is designed and the level of feedback. Active components improved in speed every year, making room for further improved feedback designs. This is, for as far as I understand, the base for the claimed sound quality improvement. A short remark on the audio boards. It was too much a hassle to take apart the M33 for further analysis since I only had the unit for a week. Since the processing is important in a unit that does streaming, MQA and DIRAC, it's good to know an NXP 1 GHz ARM processor running Linux takes care of it. The DAC is the ES9022 from the well known ESS series. But far more important is that it is all close to each other, provided the physical design is done cleverly. There need not be concerns about clock jitter between the streamer and the DAC for they are both housed in the M33. There will be no losses in interconnects while the complete setup can be optimized during design and not in the listening room of the buyer. So it all depends on the electronic designs to what degree the M33 sounds good. Having seen a large number of inputs and features you might think it's a complex device to operate. And that's not the case. Perhaps the initial settings might be somewhat intimidating for the truly digiphobes, but there will surely be a handy nephew in the family who can set it up. Or the dealer where you bought the M33 will be able to help you. All settings are made in the Blue Sound app on either a tablet, smartphone or computer. iOS, Android, macOS and Windows apps are available for free. 
What's there to set up? To start with you might want to connect the external sources like the TV and perhaps a turntable. Then you can name the inputs used so that when you want to connect the input connected to the TV on the touch screen or in the Blue Sound app, you see TV in the menu and not HDMI slash ARC. You can do that for every input. PlayStation 4 is so much clearer than Optical 1. Unused inputs can be made invisible in the menu to give a better overview. You also have to point the M33 towards the shared volume on the computer or on the NAS that holds the music. The M33 will start indexing the music which can take a long time if you have a lot of music. When this is done and a pair of loudspeakers and a network are connected you are ready to play music. As mentioned earlier, you can control the M33 using the touchscreen on the front, the infrared remote control and the Blue Sound app on a smartphone, tablet or computer. Blue Sound supports 20 streaming services and can play DSD files by converting them on a computer that runs the Blue Sound app. The M33 does not only offer Blue Sound streaming functionality and the new Eigentag power amps, it also offers MQA and DRAC. MQA in short is a more transparent way of storing music, although not everyone understands that. It uses less bits for high res files than normal FLAC or ALAC files do and therefore are considered to be lossy by some while in fact it usually leads to files that, judged on the sound quality, stand closer to the master. Although there are some albums that sound slightly less than the normal flag version, in almost all cases the MQA files are more transparent. You do need hardware that can play MQA files at full quality, predominantly coming from the Tidal streaming service and special MQA CDs. See my video on MQA for more information. Dirac is a brilliant room correction system that to my knowledge is unsurpassed. It's not only relatively simple to use, it also is rather effective in solving acoustical problems. It can't of course perform miracles, but in most living rooms the sound will get far more transparent in the low end. To achieve this you must connect the supplied microphone to the USB socket on the rear, download the Dirac Live app and do a number of measurements as instructed by the app. See my review of the NAD M10, the M33 smaller sibling. I used my iPad this time, that essentially works the same as the Windows or Apple OS version but is very simple to use. Just start it, select the M33 after it is recognized and follow the on screen instructions and you will end up with a graph like this that you then can store in one of the M33's Dirac banks. There are six banks and you can alter the preferred curve that has a slight slope to any other one. You need to get used to the tight bass instead of the woolly bass that is infected by room modes. Use it for some days and then switch off Dirac. If all went well, you quickly want to go back to Dirac switch on. Let me first say that my experiences with UCD and Encore has set my experience level. To me the Encore modules in a standard application gave ok results but nothing more. And that goes for other class D amps as well. I still prefer the class AB and AD amp in my setup 3 over the new class D models, although that might be a matter of taste. With the M33 things are different quite different. Streaming for my music storage, using either Blue OS or Rune, gave such a neutral open dynamic sound, a very well controlled low end with lots of texture, a very open and clean mid range and filigrane highs you don't expect in this price range. The stereo image is remarkable in that it is wide and deep with excellent focus where the boundaries integrate in the actual acoustics in a very natural way, something I have never heard before. When you switch on Dirac, after calibration of course, 
that effect is even stronger. In fact, all sound properties are further upgraded by Dirac. Even connecting my digital front end connected over analog balance lines to the M33 sounded great and far better than you would expect since the signal is digitized again, passed through the Dirac processing and made analog again. I have not tried the phono input but I understand that the sound quality is very good too. This is an impressive amp that needs no warm voicing to avoid listening fatigue. It's analytic, open and yet stressless. Wow! 5500 euros is a lot of money, but it's a low price for what the M33 offers. Let's start with that it can be set up to be very easy in use. It can be expanded to become a stereo AV receiver and has all commonly used inputs save one. There's no way of connecting a computer over USB to the M33. But then again, you can play music from your computer over the Blue OS streaming function. Blue OS lets you also set up a multi-room system over your network, be it over Ethernet cable or Wi-Fi. Blue Sound has wireless active speakers, the well-known Node 2i and so on. It functions as well as Sonos, sounds better and it can be integrated with streaming products from NAD. You might wonder if I like the M33. Well, I don't. I love it. And that's a statement I like to end this video with. But there will be another video next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media. So you will be informed when new videos are out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and thus trustworthy. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video in YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.